Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the load more component. Let's learn how to further customize the pagination element. In the JavaScript, we have some options to go and create this default pagination. If you wanna take it a step further, this video will go in Inspector, show you the classes we're working with, add some classes in Inspector, and then copy paste them into Webflow. If you are brand new with Inspector, this is a great video for you. I, I will go through this slowly. This is for beginners. We're going to go through some of the basics and the CSS is really simple. We're going to make big changes with a small amount of work. First, let's take a look at what we have initially. What we're going to do is blow this up. The text is going to be bigger. The boxes are going to be bigger. And what we're going to do is use these two classes. Before I get into this, let me go down and show you in the JavaScript, we do have good options to go and make this pagination element customized for your site. The background color, the active background color, the text color, the active text color, and the border color. All of those options go and create something like this. Now, maybe we want it a bit bigger, maybe we want it vertical, maybe we want some big ridiculous change. We can do that with CSS. Let's go back up to the head of this page and let's look at this, styles for pagination. These are the classes that make up pagination. We have the most important being FS pagination and then a class with some tags afterwards. We'll look at that and we will see how that works inside Inspector. And then we have the UI elements of FS pagination page, previous, inactive, active, dots, and next. We're not going to be working with these. We have a list of these available to you if you wanna go and do something with them. But for this video, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to make big changes with a small amount of work. And we're only going to work with these two classes. Let's go and CSS these, get these ready for some styles. Okay, cool, let's talk about what these are. First, we have a simple, straightforward class FS pagination. We're going to see that inside Inspector. Then we have FS pagination, and then without any dots, no classes, we have UL, LI, A. UL stands for unordered list. LI stands for list item, and A is a link. And what this says is go find FS pagination inside, nested inside, one level in, we have a UL, one level into that we have an li and one level into that we have an a a link so any element that follows this structure fs pagination ul li a we are going to apply these styles to that that's going to make a lot more sense when we go inside inspector which we'll do right now i'm going to right click on this element and go click on inspect and in here, we will see we have our FS pagination. And watch as I go and hover over these, how they change on the page. Look at this. As I'm hovering over different elements, they are lighting up and they're giving me a little tooltip here on the left. And let me zoom in just a little bit here so we can see this. This is a really good skill to learn inside Inspector. If you're using a library, sometimes the classes are not that clear. And this is a perfect example. You wanna do something extra to it and that can't be done inside Designer without first understanding what the classes are doing and how to edit them. So let's go and first look at this FS pagination. We see some styles already applied to this class. And if I were to add another one, let's say font size, Let's do a 24 pixel. And you can see right away, those changes are seen here on this live site. Now note, this is very important. Just because I make them in Inspector doesn't mean they are live on my website. They are only for me to see. I can do anything I want here and it's just local to my browser, to my instance of this loaded page. If I were to reload this page right now, this would not be present. And I'll just show you that right here. 
It's here, it's changed, I reload, it's gone. Bye bye. What we can do is just go edit right back and to make sure that this is going to stick with us when we go and publish our Webflow build, let's go ahead and copy this and paste it inside the FS pagination class. There we go. And now, now if I were to save this and publish my Webflow site and then reload this page, this change would be there. Great. So we have now officially updated our font size. It's in Webflow, we're good to go. Now let's look at this nested or child element selector of this class. FS pagination, U-L-L-I-A. Let's see what this is doing. Nested inside this FS pagination, the child element is U-L. Perfect. Then we go one further, one further child, and we have the L-I. And let's open up one of these LIs, look at all these familiar classes that we deleted from the comments, they're all here. If I were to open up an LI, we see an A inside. And we have our FS pagination, our UL, our LI, and our A. That's exactly what we are saying right here. FS pagination, UL, LI, A. It is finding this element that doesn't even have a class on it, just this element, is going to get the styles that we're about to put on it. And watch as I click on LI, we don't see much classes here. We know that there's more styles to this element than just what we see here. Then we go to something like A, the link, and we see a bunch of styles. Now we're getting closer. Let's now go and try to manipulate these. Let's play around with them. Let's, you know, have fun. Don't don't be afraid to mess something up because you can just reload and go start over. We can see we have our background color, which we set in the JavaScript. We have our color, which we set in the JavaScript. Uh, we have our border, which was also set in the JavaScript. And something that I would love to change now is the padding because we just made the text bigger and now it seems that there's not enough padding. Four pixels top and bottom, eight pixels, left and right. And what I can do here is just update these values to see what it would look like. Let's do 14, that looks good. And let's do 24. There we go, that's big. So we had one update here. Now four to eight is 14 to 24. Let's quit out of this, let's just see what this looks like. And that looks cool. Now we have this big giant pagination element, and maybe you want something like this on your page. We just added two lines of CSS. We have done a lot of visible work here. Cool. So let's open this back up and make sure that style finds its way to the Webflow build. Remember, if I were to reload the page, that's gone. I cannot get it back. So I'm going to go and add this padding. Great and we don't want that extra space. Cool, padding 14 pixels, 24 pixels. I'm going to save this and publish it, and I'm going to show you that it doesn't work. That's right, I will show you that this is not going to work, and I'll show you exactly why. It's not going to work because we are writing these styles here, and then we're saying, hey, library, go and apply, go and create this element and apply styles to it. The applied styles through the library are going to take priority over what we just wrote here in the head. Don't worry, we're going to add something to the CSS to make sure that it takes priority over the library styling. Let's go and see this designer froze up on me, but let's, uh, it looks like we're good. Probably published. Let's see. Let's Let's see if we see what we've done here. Okay, perfect. That is half of what we done, half of what we did. We have the bigger text. We do not have that padding. As you see there, it looks like there's no update of padding here. So if I go into inspect, I'm going to go and click on this and you can see that padding four pixels, eight pixels is still there. And what we added here is crossed out. 
because this is taking priority. This is more important. There's a, a number of reasons why it may be more important, but for what we need to know, it's more important. This is crossed out, this is not crossed out. So how do we make this more important? We add an important tag. Look what happens when I go to the end of this and I write important. Now, this is crossed out and this is taking priority because we're saying, hey, browser, this class right here, this style right here, this is important and we want this to take a priority over any styling of padding with this that doesn't have the important tag. Great, let's go and publish that, make sure it works. And after this does work, we're then going to look at adding a hover state to these elements. And what we're going to do is, first let's go and see this working. Designer is not responding for me right now. And if we reload, do we have this? Yeah, it looks like we published through. Great, let's just confirm. Let's see that cross out in the right spot, perfect. Crossed out, we have our important. That's what we want. This is the updated style that we are looking for. Now, since we're in here, let's go and test out a hover state. And a hover state, we can first play around with inside inspector. I'm going to toggle this, toggle element state to hover. And on hover, where is it? There we go. Pagination hover. Um, we are going to go ahead and set a style here. Maybe let's do a background color. Let's do a background color of, I totally don't want to choose one of these. Um, what the heck are we going to do here? I don't have any colors on top of mind. Let's just go and choose a, let's just choose a gray here so we see what's going on. There we go. All right. Perfect, we have this hover, and you can see that this, if we were to add this to the build right now, this is going to work. What I would much rather do is, it feels more organized to me to go and grab this. This is what we're working with. This is more specific. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, and then add this hover at the end of it. Let's go in here and we have what we just wrote up here and then we're going to add a hover at the end. It's ready to accept our CSS and our CSS is background color. Nice. And if I add a background color without this extra space, nice. This should work and let's see if it does. So I'm going to go and publish this and what we should see is this. When I hover over these boxes, we are going to add this background color. Cool. All right. And when this publishes, when designer decides to respond here, we will see this live. So let's go and reload. Let's check it out. Let's see what happens here. And there we go. We're already live. So check this out. We just added a hover state to it. Uh, when we go and click, we can then navigate to the next one and totally working. This is exactly what we were looking for. Cool. So we just went into Inspector. We just added some custom CSS to the page. It is published here in the head. This is totally working. And we just changed the look and feel with just a few lines of styles. If you have questions about how this works, if you want to learn more, if you loved this type of Inspector video, we can do more of them. Go to us at sweetjs.io, tell us what you are thinking, tell us if you need help, and we are super pumped to see what you do and how you style these pagination elements. That's effing sweet.